Hello and welcome to this complete guide to FL Studio 20, in which I'll cover everything you'll need to know as a complete beginner to this incredible piece of software. Now, I remember when I first opened FL Studio back in the day and how overwhelming and complicated everything looked, but hopefully after this video, it'll become a lot clearer and you'll have the knowledge and understanding to start making your own original tracks. So let's start with a completely blank FL Studio file. Now, I think a good way to break down what we're looking at here is to break it down into five main sections. So we have the browser down the left hand side here, the channel rack up here, the playlist window, which is this large section here, the mixer down here and the piano roll, which we'll come on to later. These are essentially your five building blocks inside FL Studio 20 that you'll use on every single track you make. And in this guide, I'll show you how to use each of these five sections one by one from a beginner's perspective. Before we look at these five sections, I want to briefly mention some features up here in this top bar that will be really useful if you're a beginner. So if we go up to file here, this is where you'll find your options to open and save projects you're working on or to export them into WAVE or MP3 files. In this options section, you can play around with various MIDI and audio settings. This is where we can connect up any MIDI keyboard or drum pads or an audio interface as well. But for now, I'd recommend leaving this all how it is. Over here, we have the master volume and pitch controls. You'll also notice when you hover over a control, a brief description pops up in this box, which can be really helpful. This option here allows you to switch between whether you're editing a pattern or editing the track as a whole. That might not make a lot of sense right now, but we will be covering that later in the video. You'll see then you have your basic play, pause and record buttons. Next to those, you've got your tempo selector, which you can change by simply left click and dragging, or you can just right click and choose type in value to manually input your chosen tempo. Over here, we have several really useful buttons. Now, I won't go through all of them in this video, except the ones you'll need as a complete beginner. So you've got this metronome button for turning on and off the metronome. This key keyboard button here actually activates your computer keyboard so you can use certain keys to actually play sounds. Finally, this button here adds a countdown before you start recording audio or MIDI. Okay, so moving on, this pattern selector here is a really important feature that allows you to choose the pattern you want to select and edit in this channel rack here. So the basic concept of FL Studio is to create and edit individual patterns in this channel rack and then arrange these patterns into full tracks. Again, don't worry if that's not making a lot of sense yet. We will be going over that in a lot more detail. The final thing I want to mention up here is these first five buttons here. Now, these actually correspond to the five main sections that I mentioned earlier. So each button brings up a specific section. So we have the playlist, the piano roll, the channel rack, the mixer, and the browser as well. Like I said earlier, these are the five building blocks of making a full track in FL Studio 20 right up to the final mix. So without further ado, let's take a look at the first building block, the browser section. This section can be found down the left side of the interface and is basically where your sounds, samples and instruments are stored for you to browse and choose the elements you'd like to add to your projects. For example, if I wanted to browse the drum sounds in this folder, I can click on a sound and using the arrow keys, I can quickly play through each sound in the folder. Now, if you want to add a folder in your documents so that it shows up in this panel, go up here to options and to file settings. And here under browse extra search folders, click one of the folder icons and choose the folder you want to add. Now we can see this folder is in the browser panel. So now we can choose a sound in the folder and just drag it onto the channel rack. This sample here now exists within this project and that actually leads us nicely onto the next section of FL Studio 20. So the channel rack is one of the main elements you'll use in FL Studio. And the reason it's called a channel rack is this is basically where all your channels are stored, including individual samples, VST instruments and automation clips. So by clicking on any one of these channel names within the channel rack, it brings up this wrapper window where you can edit and fine tune each sample, including pitching, stretching or reversing the sound. And if you do want to delete a channel from this section, simply right click and press delete. 
At the left of each channel, you have a green button and pressing this will mute the channel. Along here, we have two knobs. So the first one is for controlling the pan of the channel and the second is for controlling the volume. These controls are also available within the wrapper, but are linked and literally control the exact same thing. The next box along determines which mixer channel the sound or instrument is being sent to. I'll be covering the mixer later in more detail, but for now, this is essentially how you would add individual effects to your chosen channel. This part here is called the step sequencer and this is where the fun really begins. So FL Studio's iconic step sequencer is, in my opinion, one of the most beginner friendly ways to create a loop or drum pattern in any door. To add a step, simply left click on any of these buttons and they'll light up and to delete the step, just right click on the highlighted step. You can also drag along here to select multiple steps at once. So if I just sequence out four kick drums and hit space to play the pattern, As you can hear, FL Studio is looping this sequence to create this simple four on the floor kick pattern. To expand on this, let's add a snare and a hi-hat to the channel rack by again dragging the sound in from the browser. And then we can sequence a pattern with multiple sounds. So this pattern now sounds like this. In case you are following along and you're not hearing any sounds, make sure you have pattern selected up here. So FL Studio plays through this pattern as opposed to the whole track, which is currently empty. And at this point, maybe pause the video and create a few basic drum patterns using this sequencer. For example, here's a basic hip hop drum pattern you can experiment with. Another feature worth mentioning is this graph icon in the top right here, which brings up this parameter editor. You can use these bottom options to edit individual steps in your sequence. For example, by selecting velocity, we can make the kick quieter when the snare hits like this. And the last feature of the channel rack I want to highlight is this plus button down here. This brings up a list of default and user added VST instruments. If we select one, it will automatically be added to the channel rack. And if you do need help adding your own VST instruments to FL Studio, so they do show up in this menu, I'll leave a link to our quick guide in the description below. So if you do have an instrument in the channel rack, how do we start creating melodies and chord sequences? This actually leads us on to our third building block, which is the piano roll. This is essentially where you compose, slice and edit the MIDI notes of a selected channel with a lot more precision and detail. If you're unsure what MIDI actually is, it's essentially the language that allows computers, MIDI instruments and other hardware to communicate. MIDI is very different to audio as it can be really easily changed and manipulated after a performance. For example, if you play a piano melody and slightly mess up halfway through, you can use the piano roll to tweak the individual notes of the performance, giving you a lot more creative flexibility. To show you the piano roll, I'm going to add the VST synth Citrus to the channel rack, which is an FL Studio stock plugin. And to open up the piano roll, we can just right click here and select piano roll. Now we can use this window to create MIDI sequences such as melodies or chords. To add notes, just click within this window like this. You can also right click to delete notes as well. You can then lengthen the notes by dragging the right edge and you can also click and drag notes around like this. FL Studio 20's piano roll is incredibly intuitive and beginner friendly, and it makes it really easy to create MIDI patterns. Now, if we hit space, FL Studio will play through this pattern. Up here, we have some really important editing tools. Most of the time you'll be using either this pencil or this paintbrush, which are actually pretty similar. We also have this mute button, which lets you gray out certain notes. This slice tool allows you to chop longer MIDI notes and this select tool allows you to drag and select multiple notes at once. There are a few other options up here, but these are the main ones you'll need to get started. Another really important feature is this magnet button up here. This lets you choose the behavior of the notes and whether they snap to certain points in the piano roll. For example, the default cell option, make sure the notes snap to these vertical lines. Whereas if we select half step, you can see it's snapping to each half beat, giving you a lot more control over the note. And if we select none, the notes don't snap to anything and you can move them around freely. Okay, so at this point, you might want to pause the video again to practice a little bit with the piano roll. Try experiment with creating some basic melodies or chord sequences. So now we know how to create drum patterns and MIDI patterns using the piano roll. It's time to bring it all together and start arranging individual patterns to create a complete track using the playlist window.
So let's say we have this basic drum loop in our channel rack. What we can now do is just click and drag in here to sequence out four instances of this pattern. And like the piano roll, if you right click and drag, it deletes the patterns as well. So remember we need to select song up here. And if we press the space bar, FL Studio will now play through this arrangement. So just like the piano roll, we have some similar features up here, like select, slice, and these same snapping options as well. You'll notice this pattern is just called pattern one in the playlist and up here. It's always good practice to name your patterns or your projects can start to get unorganized as you start adding more and more patterns. So what you can do is make sure the channel rack is selected and hit F2 on your keyboard. And then in here, you can rename the pattern. So I'm just gonna call this one drums. And if you click here, you can also choose a color for the channel as well. Now over here, you can see the name and color of the drum pattern has changed. So one of the things that makes FL Studio so unique is that these horizontal tracks don't correspond to anything by default. So if you wanted, you could copy this pattern onto any track you want. With this in mind, another good habit to get into is right clicking the track and hitting auto name. This just keeps everything a little bit more organized as you go along. So at this point, I think it makes sense to add a second pattern to this project. So to do this, we can just click this plus button up here and choose a name for our new pattern. So let's just call this piano and choose a color as well. Now you'll notice the channel rack is now completely blank. This is because you're now editing a brand new pattern you just created, which at the moment is just an empty pattern. So let's get a piano sound then. So if we click into Citrus, in this arrow menu up here, we have a bunch of patches or presets to choose from. So let's just go for realistic piano. Now, like we did before, we can just right click here and select piano roll. Now I'm just gonna quickly create a basic piano sequence. So I'll probably cut this so you don't have to watch me make it. Okay, so again, once you have your MIDI sequence, make sure you have pattern selected up here and hit space to listen. So now we want to layer this on top of the drums we added earlier. So let's close the piano roll. And now all we have to do is left click in the playlist like this. Then again, we can select auto name on this second track. And now you have two tracks that will play simultaneously. From A, you can keep adding more elements to the track by creating new patterns or just adding to the existing ones. You can also just drag any audio files you have in the browser directly onto the playlist, which you can then move around and slice in the same way you would with a pattern. And the last thing I want to mention before moving on to the final section of FL Studio is automation clips. If you're new to music production, you may not have heard of automation, but in order to create great professional quality tracks, you need to learn what automation is and how to use it. To put it simply, track automation is a way of automating a specific parameter, such as volume, pan, or reverb. This essentially means that the parameter will change as your track plays. A few examples would be slowly fading in a synth over the course of four bars, or adding a filter to a sound during only a certain section of the track. So to add an automation clip, first double click and drag inside this bar to select the section of the track you'd like to add the automation clip to. Let's say we want the piano volume to fade in. So over here in the channel rack, we have the volume knob for our piano. So we can right click and select create automation clip. This brings up this new automation clip underneath the main piano pattern. Inside this clip, you can then drag these nodes to shape how the volume changes changes over time. You can also right click to add a new node and in between each node you can edit the tension like this. And finally if we right click on an individual node we get some really cool options such as stairs, pulse or wave. So let's just mute the drums for now and now when we play the piano the volume will correspond with this pattern. <laughs> 
The mixer is the final section of FL Studio that you'll be using. And for complete beginners to music production, it's probably best to focus on the rest of the process for now and only move on to the mixer once you've fully grasped these first stages. So to open the mixer, click this mixer button in the top menu bar or just press F9. This section is where you'll mix your tracks, focusing on adding and processing effects and fine tuning your sounds. You can add effects such as reverb, delay, compression, and many, many other audio effects to your mixer channels. So you'll notice the far left mixer channel is your master channel, which is where you can edit the overall pan, volume and other functions of the entire song. So to send a specific sound to a mixer channel, left click and drag this value within the channel rack. This will send your sound or instrument to the corresponding mixer channel in which you can now add effects or change certain parameters. So just to show you how this works, let's send this snare to the 10th mixer channel. Now, if I move this slider, you'll hear it's affecting the snare as the snare is now being sent to this mixer channel. Down the mixer channel, we have a mute or solo button and a pan knob. There is also a really handy stereo separation control to make the mixer channel sound more spacious. So if we do want to add an effect to this mixer channel, we can select one of these effect slots. For example, let's add Fruity Parametric EQ 2. So if I change this EQ curve, you'll hear it's now affecting the snare. You can also add automation clips to effect plugins by right clicking in the same way we did before. At this point, depending on the effect you've added, you can begin to process various effects to enhance and manipulate your sounds. I won't go much further into this as there are so many different effects you can add, but hopefully you understand the basics of how to add and control an effect in the mixer. FL Studio comes with a huge range of stock plugins, so I'd highly recommend playing around with some of these options. And there we have it. So you should now have a grasp of the basic concepts and functions of FL Studio 20 and can now start experimenting with creating full layered songs. From here, your best course of action will be to take your time and spend however long it takes to become comfortable with the basics, learning extra tips and tricks along the way from online guides or YouTube videos. If you are still feeling a little overwhelmed at this point, that's completely normal. In time, the pieces will start to fit together and by practicing and making mistakes, you'll learn way faster. Faster. I am probably going to make another more advanced FL Studio tutorial that goes much more in depth into actually making a full track. So make sure you don't miss that one. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.